Today, we will talk about top 10 strongest ultimate in Mobile Legends for tank and support. Let's go. Just for the thrill of it, nothing counterfeit with you. Yo guys, how's everyone doing? This is your guy Assassin Dave. Welcome back to the fam again. Before we get started, I know more than half of y'all beautiful sex people have yet to join the coolest, greatest, the baddest family in the world of Mobile Legends. If you enjoy the content, make sure to drop the like, subscribe, and turn the bell on to all notification bells. I upload videos on a daily basis to keep you guys entertained and informed. Love you guys, and without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's first talk about the criteria we use today to select the 10 incredible ultimates. First of all, this ultimate has to be easy to use. Some ultimates are actually pretty difficult to maneuver properly, such as a Kai's ultimate. Or they're simply just hard to land because they're more skill shots and require a sequence of skills to be used together, such as Leomor's ultimate, Gwynevert's ultimate, and so on and so forth. It's important that we put skills difficulty in mind when we talk about the most impactful skills in the game. For example, Badang has an insane ultimate, but it's only strong if you're able to combo that with his other skills, or use that against the wall. If you just randomly throw into the open, I mean, you're gonna be looking good, but nothing much. Hey, at least it's better than... And for the actual measurement of the skill ease to use, we will actually consider whether an ultimate is a skill shot or a lock on skill. The easier a skill is to use, the higher score it will get on today's ranking. For example, Saber's ultimate is pretty easy to land. All you need to do is hero lock onto the target and then boom, chakalaka, you're good to go. But Tigro's ultimate requires you to put yourself in a good relative position in order to have the maximum impact. The second criteria for an ultimate to be considered OP is its impact on the game. You can't just go around and keep spamming Popo's ultimate without Koopa, and you can't just randomly throw Layla's ultimate at a target when they're full HP. It won't do much damage, and it certainly doesn't change the tide of the game. On the other hand, imagine a fully raged Minotaur jumping to a team of 5 people and start to throw his hammer on the ground. Now that's a skill what I call making an impact in the game. For impact on the game, we will actually measure it by considering whether a skill is single target or qual control. The more enemy you can control at once, the higher the score. Lastly, we also need to consider the utility of an ultimate. How frequent can you use it and how versatile can you utilize the skill? Meaning how many different purposes does it serve? For example, Chao's ultimate can be used to engage an enemy, protect a teammate from a flanking assassin, or simply just to flash your enemy with some recall effects in combination to mess with them mentally. It is a very versatile skill. On the other side, Carrie's ultimate is only effective on herself, and if she cannot make the best of the ultimate while it's active, Carrie becomes a pretty easy target for the opposition. Or Fanny's ultimate, besides merely serving the purpose of executing a kill, it doesn't really do much for Fanny or the team. Her main damage source was never her ultimate to begin with. And for measuring utility, the lower the cooldown and the more ways to utilize the skill is gonna give the skill a higher score in today's rank. Now, I just want to say, whether a hero is strong or not is not solely dependent on his or her or its ultimate. So just because your favorite champion didn't receive the best score today, it doesn't really mean he or she or it doesn't have an overall hero value. For example, Kufra is not really known solely for his ultimate, it's more for the whole crawl control package. The fact that he's a counter to many many champions who are reliant on dashes in the game. Anyways. With that being said, let's jump into today's comparison. Before I share my list of the top 10 best tank ultimate, here is a question of the day. Who is your favorite tank hero and why? You don't have to be tank main to answer this. In fact, if you are not a tank main, who is your favorite tank teammate in the game? Answer in the comment section down below. Kicking off today's show is Atlas. Atlas ultimate is fairly easy to use, you just need to charge it and hold and drag. And the tanky nature of Atlas definitely made that process even easier. Just make up your mind before you dive in though, don't half ass and hesitate too much. The team impact of the ultimate is definitely on the high side since it's a huge AoE skill that can pull up to 5 enemy heroes. But it does have a 55 second cooldown and it's mainly used for a singular purpose, to engage. So overall, Atlas Ultimate Fatal Links received a 7 out of 10 score today. Next up, we have Lolita's Ultimate, Nominus Blast. 
I don't even know how to read the skill name properly, so it has to be different. Overall, Lolita's ultimate is relatively easier to use than Atlas ultimate, with potentially similar team impact thanks to the large area it covers. But Lolita's ultimate has a huge casting delay, so it only received a 5 out of 10 on the cooldown and versatility front, and ended on the same 7 out of 10 on today's ranking. To a certain extent, Franco has one of the most OP ultimate in the entire game, because his ultimate Bloody Hunt is actually suppression, and nothing trumps suppression in Mobile Legends. Literally, the only way to cancel Franco's ultimate is to interrupt him with quad control or straight up kill him. You can't cancel it with Flicker, Purify, none of that works. The flip side of that is, similar to Kaja, Franco's ultimate is a single target skill, so he's also a 7 out of 10 on today's ranking. And we have Akai's Hurricane Stance. It's the hardest to maneuver for sure among all the ultimates that we mentioned in the list so far. And sometimes, knowing when to stop controlling it is actually much better than keep on playing with it. Not only can Akai's ultimate completely disrupt a team's formation, the most important thing about his ult is versatility. Akai's ultimate can be used to engage or peel enemy away, or simply used to escape. Nonetheless, he still only got a 7 out of 10 in today's ranking. The most important thing about Gatou Kaja's ult, Avatar of Guardian, is that it's stylish. It's versatile. You can use it both for offensive zoning and defensive zoning. It does require some condition to land properly though, and in order to learn that, make sure to check out the What Pro Never Tell You episode featuring zoning right here. Diggy might not be the strongest meta support choice, but when we talk about Diggy, we are mainly talking about one thing and one thing only, and that is Diggy's ultimate, Time Journey. Yeah, 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 Diggy's passive did offer us quite a bit of happiness and fresh stream of strategies, aka the Martyr Diggy strategy, but we're mainly gonna focus on his ult today. It's definitely the easiest skill to use, you just have to pop it and you're good to go. But it's also used for a singular purpose. So overall, Diggy received a 7.3 in today's score. The thing about Glue's ultimate split split is that it's easy to use and yet so effective. And most importantly, it's so much fun to use on top of it. You don't even have to use emoji and you already annoy the hell out of your opponents. With a 50 second cooldown, you can abuse the ultimate whenever you feel. So Glue's ultimate split split received a 7.7 .7 overall ranking today. Now, before we reveal the top 3 ultimate of the day, first, let's talk about how you can multiply your diamond count completely legit and completely free if you are using Android devices or have access to an emulator. Do you want to multiply your diamond amount in game without spending an extra penny? Well, Aptoid got you covered! This is how it works. For those of us who downloaded Mobile Legends from the Google Play Store, whenever you make purchase in game, the App Store actually takes a cut from that purchase and then give the rest to the developer Moonton. Aptoid, as the largest independent app store, is actually sharing that profit with you as long as you download Mobile Legends through their app store instead. And whenever you purchase Diamond through the Aptoid Mobile Legends, you will instantly receive 10% bonus and potentially double that if you're one of those well spenders. Basically, the more you spend, the more bonus you will receive. And all you need to do are just two simple things. Number one, use the link in description below to re-download Mobile Legends on your device. And when you re-download the app, your phone will most likely prompt you a window regarding the safety of the download. That's just big tech trying to monopolize your business. So make sure to select trust when it shows up. Number two, go to Google Play Store and download an app called AppCoins Wallet. This is the app that allows you to track all your bonuses and rewards to know how much extra diamonds you can purchase. And that's it, you're good to go. You can now open up your re-downloaded Mobile Legend app, quickly finish the tutorial in a few minutes, and sign in to your original account and start receiving rewards for any of your future purchases. AppToy is totally safe and secure as I am currently doing all my Mobile Legend purchases through the app. I mean, they didn't get to be the largest independent app store for nothing. You can select any payment method you like based on your region, easy and secure. Hope this will help you guys purchase more skins you want in the game. Make sure to re-download your mobile legend with the link below now and start getting bonus reward while watching this video. 
Now, the big boy ultimate, Implosion of the Mighty Tigreal. Definitely one of the most impactful skill in the entire game, and definitely one of the most satisfying skill to use in the game. The downside of the skill is also very straightforward. It has a cast animation, during which people can jump out of it, purify to run out of it, or simply don't get hit by it. Nonetheless, Tigro still has one of the best ultimate in the entire game, and he is sitting comfortably on top of the list today. Now, Mathilda has been sitting at the OP tier support hero for quite a while, and this is largely thanks to the insane amount of utility she offers. Her ultimate, Circling Ego, is just as her hero, high utility and low cost. The Circling Ego can be used to engage from far, can be used to peel an ally as well, all at a cost of only 40 second cooldown, and you can choose how to use it again. Thanks to this, Mathilda is sitting at a high 7.7 .7 ranking score on today's list. Last but not least, sitting above all else, the most OP ultimate among all the tanks in the game goes to Minotaur's Minnow Fury. This is an ultimate that does AoE knockups, one of the highest order of quad control in the game. And if you want to learn more about the quad control orders, make sure to check out this video right here. If you're able to control raids properly, you can literally be the biggest threat to the entire map. Just ask yourself, when was the last time a group of enemies decided to run towards a minotaur with rage and ultimate ready to be deployed? I mean, the answer is never. And that's why Minotaur's ultimate is getting a weighted score of 8.0 in today's ranking. And that will do it for us today guys, here is a complete list for all the tanks ultimate ranking for today. Some of the heroes were not able to list, but their ultimate nonetheless are still very very strong. Talking about you guys, Angela lovers. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to drop the like, subscribe, and turn the bell on to all notification bells. With that, Dave signing off, love you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye now. Just for the thrill of it, nothing counterfeit with